Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. I'm your host, Jeremiah, and we are here. I say we because my wife is here, but she's not in the room today, but she's here, and the Holy Spirit is here, and God is here, and you're here, so we are here. And I thank God for today. I thank the Lord because this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Well, today's message is found from the Scripture. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18, it says, This charge I commit unto you, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on you, that you by them might war or fight a good war. This is Paul speaking to Timothy, a young pastor in a city and they say that he experienced fear and a lot of other things, being a, a young pastor in a city that was very difficult. But Paul, but Paul, the Apostle Paul, encouraged him. Just like I want to encourage you in your walk with God today, because God has given you prophecies in the Word of God. The Bible says that we have a sure word of prophecy. And that word of prophecy is our strength because. It spoke about Christ coming, giving us salvation, giving us power to live for him. And based on those prophecies and the promises that God has given us, you can walk with assurance of faith. Well, there's some things I want to share with you about this means war. And the reason that is entitled this means war is because whenever something happens that infiltrates your peace or comes against something that you have established as righteous, this means war. The atmosphere is charged with the enemy and it doesn't have to be the spiritual enemy, although it is. It can just be a brother enemy, a sister enemy, a friend enemy. However, war is war. Former President John Adams says something a long time ago in the 1700s, I believe it was 1779, that he became the President of the United States, if I'm correct on that, um, 1797 to 1801. He says something that's interesting. And I had to remove one word because I don't want to offend you from the quote, but he was very angry in what he saw. He saw the wars. He saw the people. He saw what condition the United States was in. And he said, we're in a war. We're going to have to offend somebody. He, I took a word out of there. We're in a war, blank. We're going to have to offend someone, somebody. Understand that this war is charged by God and has given us everything that we need so that we can win the war. John Adams was president during the French and the, Brit and the British War, and he faced many obstacles and challenges that brought him to the point where he had to argue for defense. Can you imagine that? There was war going on, and nobody really wanted to fight the war. Well, he told his wife something that was interesting. He said, my country has, its, in his wisdom, contrived for me the most insignificant office that ever the invention of man contrived or his imagination conceived. I mean, what did he see? What did he experience? What did he know that brought him to the conclusion that the office of the presidency was not adequate enough for the task before him? He knew that he needed the wisdom of God. Remember, we're in a war. You're going to have to offend someone. You cannot negotiate with a tiger when your head is in his mouth, said Winston Churchill. In a time of war, when Britain and, and everyone in the world actually was threatened by Hitler, 
his comrades, his friends, his peers. They try to make him compromise with Hitler to make a peace treaty with him so that they would not be destroyed. And he slammed his fist on the desk and said, you cannot negotiate with a tiger when your head is in its mouth. Folks, fear will make you compromise your faith. But I have exciting news for you about the word of God. And it tells us that not only Christ is our authority, but he is our power. And he, Christ, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, both in the heavens and on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things and in him all things hold together. See, that's what we proclaim in the battle that's ahead because we're facing some serious enemies. And folks, let me tell you something. I mean, just think about this for one moment because I'm not into the politics things, I'm, I'm, but I'm not stupid now. I do see what's going on. And there is a war in the United States that is vicious. And you know what it is? It's not so much even the war from the enemies on the outside is the enemies on the inside. And that's hard to fight because we're supposed to be at peace with one another. But we can't be afraid of speaking the truth, even when it offends the closest people you know, to us. Truth is our banner and our sword. And fear is our hindrance and our enemy. So we need to have courage versus fear. We need to comfort versus worry. We need to have faith versus doubt. We need to confide and have confidence versus uncertainty. These are battles that we're dealing with every day. And let me tell you something. We need to develop a mindset that will stand the test of times because we are in the arena and we're fighting and everything that comes against us is to destroy us. So think about this. The first thing we have to do is get out of the narrow confinements of our own system of defeated thoughts. I fight with that every day. Because see, we can be so narrow because the thoughts that we think and the things that we let into our minds and into our lives are actually confining us when rather we should be growing. We cannot fight a large war, folks, with a narrow confinement of thoughts that make us afraid to face, to face the battles. Think about that. The war is not just about you. It's about everyone around you. You are fighting with a system of thoughts that have been injected to condition us to a narrow confinement of defeat. Your character is the sum of all that you are. Every act that we do comes from the hidden thoughts within us. I love what Martin Luther King Jr. said. He says, before, listen, before he even went to start off to war, he had to fight the war within himself. But he says this, an individual has not started living until he can rise above the narrow confinements of his individualistic concerns to the broader concern of all humanity. So what, what should we do? Well, let the warriors of Christ take heed. We need to listen that the battle is on. This means war. Put on the whole armor of God to resist the evil that's in our day, to stand your ground and improve your battle skills by studying the principles of God's word. That's the only way you're going to do it. You got to fight first and win the battle in the mind. Remember that the warfare you fight is not carnal, but watch this. It is mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down every imagination. See, it's right there. It is. And every high thing that exalts itself against the word, the knowledge of God. Here it is. Here's where the enemy wants to hit us is to bring us to a point of ignorance. 
but we have the authority to take every evil thought captive and transfer it to the Christ, the captain of our salvation and the commander of our lives. But most of all, remember, we must be ready to attack, to bring down, to destroy and demolish everything against the establishment of our obedience. Once you have won the war and you're obedient, you must put up a rampart so that you will not let the enemy back in. Look what God told Jeremiah in the time when he had to stand against the people of his time. You therefore gird up your loins and arise and speak unto them all that I shall command you. Be not dismayed at them, lest I cause you to be dismayed before them. And I beheld, I appointed you. Look, and I, behold, appointed you this day as a strong city. <laughs> Jeremiah, you're a strong city. Folks, you are a strong city. And he says, and an iron pillar and a brazen wall against the whole land? One man against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, against the princes, against the priests, against the people of the land. Wow, one man. God established one person, put his word in his mouth, and said, I've established you to be a warrior. And the watch this, they shall fight against you, but they shall not prevail against you. For I am with you, say of Jehovah, to deliver you. Wow, what an assurance when you know that God is, listen, walking with you and has your back. Life on this side of life should be only two words. Are you ready for this? Yes or no? You know, Jesus said, let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. He said, anything beyond this comes from the evil one. So we have to take the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand in the evil day. Right now is the evil day. Those who have taken the armor of God will find themselves in a constant struggle against the evil forces of darkness. If you prepare yourself to fight against that which is unrighteous, beware, you're going to constantly be fighting. Did you know that war is the intense grip we take on life? The exertion of any strength is warfare. Do you know how much strength does it take for you to pick up a glass of water? You say, well, I could pick up a glass of water. It's no problem. But do you know there are people in hospitals that can't even do that? They try to pick up just, just a cup and their hands begin to shake. You see, any act that takes strength is war. So you have to prepare for everything that you do. The question is this. Can one Christian make a difference in, in war? Folks, the answer is unequivocally and absolutely yes. You see, God's eternal truth will sharpen our dull minds, our perceptions, our concepts, our ideologies, our philosophies, and make the soul much more responsive to the wisdom of God because truth is light. The judgment of God is the war against unrighteousness. So understand, you are warriors, and God wants to make us warriors of righteousness. I call them righteous walkers. Why? Because you are fighting and contending for the faith against all that is defilement. And folks, that starts with, with us first. We're having a war. No weapon formed against us shall prosper why? Because we put on the armor. Thank you, Brenda Monticello. You see, God's holiness is the opposite of unholiness. His justice against injustice and his goodness against evil. Let me lay these five things before you quickly. You may have to go back and listen to this again. As we know, and I've discovered for myself, there are five levels of evil. We know that the prince of the air is Satan. In other words, he is the governing force of all military evil allies. The second one is principalities. That's the government. 
It's a federal agency that controls the nations, cities, communities, and enforcement. I mean, think about, look what's going on around us. What is happening? What levels are working among us? Three powers, forces, the strength, energy, and attributes of action and movement. That's the third level. The fourth level is rulers of the darkness of this world. Workers of law is a dark law. Specified types of military workers that farm the field for operations for the attack. And five, spiritual wickedness in high places. Enforcers. These are enforcers and watchers. They are military forces to compel compliance to the laws and rules of the governing powers. Look at all that's happening all around us and tell me, because you know there are four. There are four in, in there are four levels of evil in in Ephesians. But if you go to Ephesians chapter two, it says first the prince of the air. We're forgetting, don't forget that one. We're forgetting that one. So we have these five levels of evil working against us. Do you see what's happening in our in our in our government do you see what's happening in the streets do you see what's happening to people i mean it is mad we have unleashed a evil force because we have not stood the ground warfare has its principles and we can only appropriate its applications for battle through the word of god there is no other way the basic concept of warfare is this now watch this please don't lose this the basic warfare and concept of warfare is this. This is what Paul says. What? Question mark. What? Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own? This, how, does it, how is this warfare? Because the body will follow what your soul says, and your soul will follow what the Spirit says. That's why you have to win the war, we have to win the war with our spirit filled with the word of God, influencing our souls so that the body will be holy. A good soldier learns to prepare a good defense to be a firm offense. I'm going to say that again. I'm going to say that one more time, okay? A good soldier learns to prepare a good defense to be a firm offense. Remember, that everything is going to come about, about you and, and for you and against you. The combat is the defilement of this world, folks. We must rely on God and trust in his word, maintaining a sober judgment in every situation. We should guard our hearts with vigilance. Stay alert and heed the scriptures and teachings that God has given us. Practicing humility before God as we face the battle against the enemy. This is essential. Whatever you do, you need courage. Whatever course you decide upon, somebody will always tell you wrong. There are always difficulties that tempt you to believe your critics are right. To map out a course of action and follow it to the end requires the same courage that a soldier needs. Peace has its victories, but only brave people can win it. I pray that today's message will grip your heart and that you please share this video. Share the videos. We have to wake up. The Bible says that Christ said, arise, you sleepers, you're sleeping. He's talking to the church. He's not talking to people who are unsaved. He's talking to people of the church. Wake up, O sleeper, and Christ will shine on you. He is speaking to the church, not unbelievers. They were asleep. And the enemy was pressing in. We need to stand firm and let the scriptures lead us so that we can fight with truth against untruth or falsehood. God bless you, and I pray that you have a wonderful, spirit-filled day and that you will rise up against 
this evil generation and speak the word of God until we meet again. Shalom.